right, long time no see. I've uh, been getting a lot of people asking me for my review of the new iPad Mini. Ha! See what I did there? Samsung Galaxy Note 2, which in Northern, in my Northern dialect, which I seem to be putting on very strongly at the minute, is my phone of choice. I use it every single solitary day. And I, what I didn't want to do is come on and do one of these reviews. I've already seen a review for the iPad Mini, it's not even out yet. What I think of a review is when you've had something and you've used it and you've said what you think about it. Now, let's pretend you know all about Android and you've been considering getting one of these, but you're thinking, is it going to be a little bit too big for me? Is the Galaxy S3 going to be all right for me? You know, is that pen going to be any use? Am I going to be able to fit this in my pocket? All those kind of day-to-day -day struggles that we fight with in our daily life when it comes to choosing the next phone that we're going to own. So I'm going to put together my thoughts and actually, you know, show you the phone rather than just me waiting on. Yeah, no, I need a haircut. And it's bad lighting here as well, so sorry about that. But all in all, rest assured, I think it's the best phone I've ever had. And I think I'll be keeping on this one for a little while. I know you don't believe me, especially if you're my girlfriend, but I really do think it is a cracker. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Come on, come on. Okay then, so as I was saying, let's pretend you know all about Android and you've already had an Android phone, or you've made your mind up that you want one, you've never had one before, same thing really. Point of this is, what's the advantage of this bugger? Well, first and foremost, it's the size of it. It's not inconvenient at all. I find it fits in your pocket, just like every other phone. If you if you had the Galaxy S3 or you're thinking of getting the Galaxy S3, it's a little bit bigger. I haven't got mine with me here, unfortunately. But yeah, you're gonna feel it in your pocket. It is pretty slim, to be honest. It's about the width or thickness of a pen. But you've really got to pick one up and have hold of it in a shop, really, to sort of get to grips with how big the thing is. I really don't think the size is a problem. You're talking these days, you want a four inch screen at least. This is five and a half, so it just, it adds that size on, but it pretty much, it is all screen, really. And it, if you pick up a Note 1, it is slimmer, and because it's got its rounded corners. I mean, you do have to use it with two hands when you're texting. There are options to sort of enable it so that you can just have it on one side, but, I think, you know, ideally you do want to grab all of it two hands, but if you've got jeans on, any pocket, it's, it's going to slide in because it is thin. I mean, it's thinner than, um, I think it's thinner than an iPhone 4, to be honest, with its glass front and back panelling. But, yeah, the size, I think it's an advantage. Some people say it's a disadvantage, but I think you know what you're getting when you go for this sort of size phone. And because of the size, the battery on it has been absolutely fantastic. I've not had a problem. You're gonna get a day out of it. I've been getting two days out of it. In fact, let's have a look at it now. Let's see where we're at. I did pop it on charge a little bit today, just so that it wasn't popping up the, the um, running out of battery message. So it says one day, 10 hours there. Now I did connect to my USB at work very, very, for a well, maybe half an hour, something like that, just to give me, and you can see the sort of steady spike that was going down there. It's just raised up a little bit, just to give me that little bit extra. You're definitely going to get a day out of it. I always have it on full brightness. Slid to the edge there. I always have Wi-Fi on, I always have GPS on, I always have 3G data on. I've turned mobile data and Wi-Fi off now to stop me getting any notifications while I'm doing this. But, the things that make it stand out from other phones are obviously the size and this stylus thing. So let's just whip this out. Because at first I was of the opinion that I'm never going to use this. Now I've got it set so that every time I pull it out, it opens up a new note that I can use here. I'm not going to save that. You can set it so that it doesn't do that. Now I have set it so that it does do that. Now there is something else that it does when you first get it. Now I'm not a big fan of it, but I'll show you it anyway. And it's in the display settings and it's called page buddy okay now what that means or what that does is when you whip the stylus out you get this page here now I don't know how well you can see it but it's just basically different types of 
handwriting messages you can write. It's just a different style of paper, basically. Anyone you choose when you do a new message allows you to insert images. Let's just find, there we go. So, take picture images, record video, video, clipboard, maps, idea, sketch, clip art. So you can throw all those in. That's the same as the S3, to be honest. But I had a guy that complained on my um, unboxing video saying, why have you got one if you're not going to use the pen? It's all about the pen. Everything's for the pen. Like, when you're in meetings and when you're in colleges and stuff like that. So I remember thinking to him, like, okay, right, yeah, I, I do work in a company where meeting minutes have to be taken and whatnot. So if you were in a meeting situation and you had the pen with you and you'd whip the pen out and there's a guy sat in front of you and he's being a complete idiot and he's annoying you, what you can do is you can draw a really big sort of penis and you can show it to your friends and uh, sort of next to you and, and they'll laugh about it. I don't know where that went then. Maybe it disappeared because, oh, I know why. Because I've got this, um, this shape option thing on here. So let's, uh, let's get rid of that. So choose me rubber. I can rub that out. And uh, yeah, so at first I thought this was a bit of a, a daft thing, you know, I mean, yeah, you might use it for drawing, drawing knobs, but I have actually found myself using this little pen and writing stuff. Now I don't like this, uh, this pop-up extra page that you get. This thing here. It, these are all my pages at the bottom, these little dots. finger and when you pull the pen out this one appears and it's a little bit bloaty because what else it does is it puts recommended shortcuts in your drop down and it also changes your bottom shortcuts here you can't change them it does it for you so I wasn't a big fan of that so what I did is I went into the little settings tab and this page buddy will kick in with your S pen when you pull it out when you put your earphones in when you dock it or when you're roaming abroad so you can turn those off individually or on individually I turn the whole thing off because I just think it gets in the way personally. So I have it set so that when you pull the pen out, let's put it away. Oh, can't get it in, that's at a funny angle. That's what she said. Right. When I pull it out, I can write down a phone number. That's not a real phone number. Well, it might be. It's not one that I intentionally mean to be real. So I find that you can whack the note down and then you can just tick it and it'll save it. You can close that. You don't have to have that popping up, but I find I am using it amazingly. I didn't think I would. I've got the S note app in the bottom here, so when I tap that, it opens up all my existing notes. So what have we got on here? Um, oh yeah, hovering over it pops up, isn't it? So note two review, so there we go. Let's have a look in there. And again, my writing is amazing, but... Um, I do actually find myself quickly scribbling stuff down. So note to review, uh, MacBook fight, note to bad points, note to good points. Yeah, that, that's not the note I wanted. There was actually one. So I'll give you an idea what stuff I've been putting on here. Uh, video list, Xbox games, wanted list, food shopping, washing, tidying you know, up, other shopping, deep clean, note to bad points. MacBook Pro eBay list, to-do list, so I literally find myself scribbling on it as if we were back in the dark ages and I never thought I would. I bought it because of the size and the battery and the, the quality of the screen, but I do find myself using this. And you can also transcribe, when you actually write a message, you can use the pen handwriting. Now I initially put that down as a bad point, but I actually find that I'm getting okay with it. So if you've got the pen out, and you do a new note, like this. You've got, I don't know, you probably can't see it very well, but that's your um, your little brush at the top. If you hold your pen down on it, you can change the thickness of it, and again, you've probably seen this, change the color of it, change the type of brush that you've got, or type of pen. I tend to have this one, I tend to have it very thin, and I tend to have it black, very sort of boring and plain, that's fine. The next item along is a little um, icon for drawing shapes. So if you're gonna be drawing specific circles or triangles for whatever reason you would choose to do that if you're making a note and you need to put a specific shape by it i don't know what else you can do with it and it doesn't recognize that so yeah don't know what i would do with that but yeah it just makes you sort of polish up 
what you're drawing. That's the rubber icon, so let's get rid of all those shapes. You can just clean the page, you don't have to actually draw, uh, rub everything out manually, but I kind of like doing it, it's kind of nice. So, paintbrushy thing, insert shapes, text, so if you hit on the text, if you've got the pen out, you get this little bottom section here. Now my writing, as you've already seen, is garbage. But if I just write in here, now this works best if you're holding it in one hand and writing in the other. So a line gives you a space, a line to the left is a backspace, so you can delete on it. And again, at first I found myself always using the two-thumb keyboard, and then incidentally the keyboard itself is brilliant because it's got the numbers on the top. Fantastic. But this automatically pops up when you've got the pen out. So, let's just try and write something like, my name, oh dear, see it even recognises that is, Stuart, I deliberately buggered that, see I even tried to make that not recognise it and it still did, that's uh, mad skills, put space in there, there's no space there, so I mean, I think you'd find yourself constantly fiddling and faffing and it's put capitals in. I think it literally looks at the weight at the size you're writing. So if you're writing quite small. Mmm. Oh that went big. That's uh, interesting. Or you have to round the corners. So yeah, there's obviously um, lessons to be learnt there but if I write a word that it doesn't know like flipping oh, isn't that heck. They are real words so I don't know what I'm talking about there. It's not putting a space in between each one. But I am making a bit of a meal of this here, but you can actually find yourself being fairly fluent with it. And uh, But again, you have to hold it in one hand and write with the other. Otherwise, like on the table like this, it's, just, it's not as easy for some reason. Even though you'd think it'd be easier, but it's not. It doesn't appear to be. So, writing text on here is cool. And it is actually a little bit quicker than just typing. You hold your pen down, it'll highlight a word, delete the whole word. You can actually, um, on the rubber, you hold down the rubber, clear all. That's a quick way of clearing all, surprisingly. So as for the scribbly note side of things, I actually find it pretty good. The only other real difference to any other Android phone that you've got on this, and I've not seen anybody else go on about this, I'll put the pen away, for now, because... Uh, We've seen enough of that. It's not really good for putting it down when it's flat on the table for some reason. Oh my goodness, right, get rid of that. Is when you hold down the back button, the capacitive back button, you get this side menu here, which is pretty weird, because I thought at first, what's that? And you see the little tab there, it sits there. If you hold down the back button, it disappears. Hold it down again, the whole thing comes back. Now. There's a specific list of apps on here. Chrome, email, gallery, Gmail, Maps, messaging, Nestnote, Google Talk, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. So all the sort of googly ones and the main sort of social networking ones. And if you hold down on one of these apps, like for instance, YouTube. If I can do it properly. Hold it down, drag it in, it loads YouTube. Fantastic. Pick anything else from this little menu. Like for instance, Chrome and drag that over, it loads half the screen as Chrome, half of it as YouTube. Now I don't have any data connected, so I've picked some fantastic apps to show you there. But the point is, you can actually have two apps going at once. So you could have your email or your text messages or your YouTube and something else. You can drag this bar up and down to change the proportions. It's not going to connect to anything because I don't have any data switched on at the minute, so Let's uh, bring S note into there. So those those notes that I was just looking at then. Slide it up and down. Press this button here and it flips the top to the bottom. And if you press that button it just takes over in the whole screen. And again if you've had enough of this side panel thing here, hold the back button and it disappears. Tap back, goes back to where you were previously. Back I again I always use the back back arrow. I never click really click the home. Because when you back out of something, it actually closes, and I prefer that. Don't really like just hitting that and thinking, oh, stuff's still running in the background. So holding it down. 
get rid of things like this, you can just hit the bin to get rid of them all at once. I don't really like leaving stuff running in the background. But yeah, the S Pen integration is pretty good. I quite like it. I didn't think I would, and that's that's a lot that's a lot for me. Screen size fantastic, the battery life is amazing. You you know this three thousand one hundred milliamp battery will get you through two days and I do a lot of travelling. I'm always messing on the phone and stuff. Again, full brightness, GPS always on, everything uh, that would drain the battery normally, like Wi-Fi. I don't have Bluetooth on, but everything else is always buzzing and it's always full brightness, and I am getting so much life out of it. I'll disconnect it about half past eight in the morning, and I'll go. Uh, I'll still be using it. I'll get home from work and I won't bother putting it on charge even if it's on the 50% I found with the S3 that if it was on a sort of 50% I I knew by the end of the night it would be down to at least 20 and it wouldn't be enough to get me through another day but when this is down to 50% I don't even sweat it. it it always manages to get through so it's pretty damn good and as for the size of it I find that it is pocketable I know it, I'm not saying it, it's not the smallest phone and it is fairly weighty, but it's got a good, it feels nicer than the S3. And funnily enough, when I hold an S3 now, it feels quite small. Obviously, because this is such a behemoth. But you'll fit it in a jeans pocket. You'll fit it in a handbag if you're a woman and whatnot. And your crazy bag full of stuff. My girlfriend said uh, it's actually too big for her. But again, it is extreme. You wouldn't really go in for something this big unless you had a rough idea that you're going to have to hold something quite big. Ooh, uh. But yeah, um, I was of the opinion of getting this Nokia, this uh, Windows Phone 8, but and this was off my radar, so I knew it was out, and I thought, yeah, I'm not really a big fan, but when I went in and had a look and picked it up, if you've got an S3, I don't think it's really worth you making the leap to it, to be honest, because it's not that different. But those, that little split-screen, multi-screen, and the pen do give it that little extra angle. There are other things that you can see and do with it, but I've seen a lot of videos showing and explaining what they are. You can see the detailed specs, you can see the weight, the size, the comparisons to other phones. I think the thing that sets it apart is being able to write those hand notes, being able to write the text in the bottom, and being able to have those split screen applications on everything else. And, and um, sorry, that assistant, that page buddy thing that sort of jumps in, gets a little bit in the way for me, that. But everything else you will see even with this jelly bean version is I mean I had the jelly bean on the S3 as well but you're not really going to notice anything else other than TouchWiz and I know a lot of people don't like TouchWiz I went through a stage of hating it but now I really like the extra functionality and stuff you get but there's nothing on here that makes you think wow this is running jelly bean it's completely different you, um, I recommend that you try it out by picking it up and seeing if it'll fit in your pocket in the shop and whatnot. But try not get arrested for for doing that because it might look a bit odd, sliding a phone in your pocket that's on a drawstring to stop you stealing it. But I have been really, really impressed with it, and uh, I will do individual videos that cover things properly because I understand this now is just a general natter and it's not really showing you anything in depth. But what I intend to do, because I know it's been a bit, video has been a bit thin on the ground lately, is take one aspect and do a five to 10 minute video of that one thing and plod through it. Because I know sometimes when you're thinking of getting a phone, you're like, well, what can it do this? Can it do that? What happens if you've got the lock screen on and you pull out the pen? All that kind of stuff, so. I expect people to just sort of ask me usual stuff underneath this vid, and I use that. I mean, I asked a few people on the Facebook group the other day what they want to see, and they put a few things on there. So I've I've got all that in the back of my mind, and I will be doing videos that are a bit more useful. But this, to me, this was, um, as far as I'm concerned, just a video to say what I think of it, what I think the differences are that sort of set it apart from the others, and is it worth getting if you're in the market for something that's going to have a long battery and you don't mind the exercise, and I think you will find yourself using the pen, totally go for it. If you've got an S3 and you're thinking, well, it looks fairly similar to an S3, should I bother making a change? You don't really need to, to be honest. The biggest thing that set it apart from that is is just the battery. The battery's an extra thousand milliamp hour, so it's gonna give you that bit more juice, but I'm a bit daft. I'll obviously go for the, the latest and greatest uh, thing if it's there, but I really don't think you need to jump from an S3. Jump from anything else, but if you've got an S3 and you're considering it, I don't really think you need to personally but that's just my opinion that's all it is
Right, I've probably repeated myself about a thousand times now, so I'm going to get off and I'll talk to you all in another video. Take care now. Bye-bye then.